And Stephen Hester is with me now. You always said you wanted to see this through to privatisation. You won't. You've been pushed. Do you know, the important thing, and I understand why we're going to talk about personalities and so on today, but the fact that we have a window of relative calm for me to step down or announce that I will after a succession, I think is the most important thing because RBS five years ago, as we all know, was a threat to itself and the economy. It's not today. I've worked hard with, I don't know, 100,000 and odd people to make that happen. Uh, I think the bank restructuring phase is largely done. The nation is much better off as a result, as is RBS. And that gives a window uh, if I'm to leave before privatization. Uh, and now is, is, if you like, the first window that makes sense. But you wanted to stay longer, didn't you? I mean, that, let, let's, be, let's be blunt about this. I mean, you, you, you sort of slightly lost a wrangle here over the timing. No, truthfully, I, I have mixed feelings about it because I took on a mission. I took that mission very seriously. I really wanted to do the right thing by RBS and, and all the people who were in the trenches with me and all the customers of RBS who, who I really have enjoyed meeting and, and, and serving and so on and so forth. So, of course, I want RBS to be successful. That, that if I have something to look back on, it will be that. And, and the only issue is what was the right moment, what was the right way I could serve RBS. Uh, and so I would have taken it through privatization, but to do that, for me, would have been the end of a journey. And I think that if the right person can be found, for someone for whom it is the beginning of a journey to lead RBS, it's the better way. Right, but what, what are the controversial things you have effectively ducked by announcing this today? There are reports tonight that there are perhaps 2,000 investment bankers going to lose their jobs at RBS. Is that true? Well, I, I plan to be around perhaps till the end of the year or, or if a successor is appointed uh, earlier. So I won't duck anything. And, uh, but I'll is be, there pain about to be announced for, accountable. for hundreds or we, perhaps we, thousands we, of bankers? We do know uh, that we are shrinking our markets business. We've announced that already and that will regrettably uh, involve some job losses. Today's announcement is, is unconnected with that and I'll certainly be there uh, to see that process through. More importantly, though, we are coming to the end of a restructuring period and I think that RBS is increasingly able to look forward and do the job everyone wants it to do, whether that's serving our customers, very important, share price, which is more than triple what it was, we want it to go further, uh, of course the taxpayers' money to be got back. I think that we are now able to start looking positively to the future with RBS. But it's how, and, isn't it? And hopefully I've contributed to that. I mean, the, the Banking Commission report is going to raise this idea of, of a good bank and a bad bank. You're opposed to that. Do you know, what, what I think is as follows that it's natural in such a big and important industry, which has been so controversial, and especially RBS, that there will be these debates. And what we've tried to do at RBS, what I've tried to do, but the whole board has agreed, been part of it, we've all been at one for the last five years, is play the cards we were dealt as well as we could. But that I, was an idea think, you couldn't go along and with, I think wasn't we, it? I think we have. And there, what I can assure you is there's no fallout here, there's no secret wrangle about a strategy that one person wanted and didn't, another person uh, didn't want. Actually, it's the opposite. We've just announced our first profit in five years in the first quarter. We've announced that our balance sheet is back in the shape we wanted it to, to, to be. The uh, regulators have given us permission uh, to say that we're on track with our capital. So what, what I hoped is whenever the moment that I came to go, that it would be a calm moment relative, for all, all things are relative for RBS, uh, and a moment when people could concentrate on accomplishment uh, and have a foundation to look forward. But ha have you been fed up with the noises off, as David Ruffley was suggesting, with political interference, with the debates around your performance? Yeah. I've said many times, on the one hand, the job that I do is bruising, it's difficult, it's challenging. Uh, that's because it's dealing with big and complicated things. And you, been, you didn't enjoy it, did and you? And I've been really lucky to have many, many people in the trenches with me doing it. So that's true, but it also has been an unbelievably rewarding business challenge and human challenge. Uh, and it's only big and important because there are frustrations and difficulties, so you can't have one without the other. I, I hope to look back on this period with pride. Uh, I hope to look forward at what RBS can accomplish uh, with equal pride, uh, and that's really as simple as that. Do, ultimately, do you believe taxpayers will get their money back 
or is RBS going to be privatised at a loss? I don't decide privatisation. I'm very confident that RBS can repay taxpayers. We have already repaid. We have already repaid 500 billion. I see no reason, you know, following when company well managed, etc., why that won't be the case. Timing. I don't know. It depends on the economy, it depends on the stock market, it depends on the decisions that are made. Uh, but RBS is a strong business. We serve customers, 33 million customers. The customers need us. We need to do a better job but, doing that. But I think the future can be very positive for RBS. You, you, you've admitted you're not going to finish the job as you, as you wanted to. Uh, why should you then walk away with £1.6 million in salary and benefits and... The, the shares in the future that could be worth £4 million. This is taxpayers' money, effectively, isn't it? You know, one of the uh, good things about today's announcement is you won't be able to ask me questions like this many more times. Well, maybe that's one of the reasons um, you're going. And, but I'm... <laughs> uh, and, and so, uh, of, of course, you know, wrangles about bankers' pay are not going to stop uh, with me and uh, other people can carry on that baton. Uh, I think if you look at the commercial world, people may or may not like the commercial world, but if you look at it and what we've accomplished at RBS, the size of the job, the challenges and the successes, and look at what I've been paid for it, it would be low in a commercial sense. It would so that's be, fair, it would is it? Be, Even though the job isn't finished? It would Five be, million pounds? It would be high in uh, a societal sense, and so this is an argument that will go in circles for years to come, I'm sure. Stephen Hester, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you.